everyone. Thank you for joining us for this workshop, live stream, webinar, whatever you want to call it today. My name is Matt. And I'm Wes. And today we are really excited to chat with you about the latest and greatest church track feature, automations. Wes, yes. this is going to be great. That, well, and what's funny, we say the latest and greatest, and this has only been out a few months, and we've mm -hmm. seen so many churches use automations, create automations, and I just can't wait to see how churches take this to the next level. It is wild. Yes, we're, we're really, really looking forward to this workshop just because this is a great feature that we want more of you to know about and understand how to use and how to get the most out of it. And that's what this workshop is going to be for. But before we get into that, let's tell you about a few resources that you can enjoy after this is over. Uh, the first is we have a Facebook group that we would love all of you to join. Uh, it's a private group that you can request to join with other church track users from all over the world. There's thousands of ministers in that group right now yeah. that love doing ministry and love church track so much that you can jump in and ask questions about either one of those things. And somebody there has an answer and would love to help you out. And Wes, tell them about the YouTube channel. So if you're like me and you like to learn how to do things by watching videos, because reading is hard sometimes, <laughs> especially when you don't have enough coffee. at on my third cup today. Uh, but our YouTube channel is just such a great resource because we post all of our previous live streams. We post a lot of step-by-step -step videos. And so there's a good chance if you're trying to learn how to do something in church track, there's a video on the YouTube channel for you to help you learn. And if you're ever in your church track account, in the top right-hand corner of the screen, there's always this tangerine is the technical word. It's an orange help button. If you click on it, this little drop down window appears. And in this window, there's always these two buttons at the top, or at the, I'm sorry, at the bottom. Right above that, there's always some like uh, suggested articles that you can read based on the screen that you're looking at. But you can always click the show all help topics. It takes you to our online user guide where we have, uh, I think it's 130 or 140 different articles you can read on everything There's to do. more than that. Since, yes. since we last put that, I think there's almost 200 articles. Oh, goodness. <laughs> We've been churning them out. But if you ever have a question about your account, I would be surprised if the answer is not in one of those articles. And there's a settings and automations section. This is where you'll find the articles related to the automations feature right here at the top. But I've also linked to these articles in the video description below, so you can check those out. Um, and also, you can create a support ticket or schedule a phone call with our support team anytime. We've got a great support team, so if you ever have any questions, they're on, they're Johnny on the spot. They're always answering tickets usually within like an hour. Yeah, usually an hour. Um, and then also, ask us a question button in that orange help drop down window it takes you straight into a support ticket, so you can reach out to the support team right from your church track account. All right, so the housekeeping is done. We've got yes. that out of the way. Now we can actually get into the good stuff. Yes, here. the good stuff. We're gonna we're gonna cover a lot of ground today. We're gonna be moving pretty fast through this this uh, this little workshop, but we have this chat open. So go ahead and jump in the chat. Let us know who you are, where you're coming from, and ask any questions that you have along the way. Don't feel like you're interrupting us. Uh, if you're watching this after the fact, after we've streamed this live and we put this on our YouTube channel, you can still leave a comment below or you can reach out to our support team with any questions that you have. Yep. Um, but we're gonna talk about a lot. We're gonna talk about what is automations, uh, then we'll cover uh, how to get started with church track automations, and then we'll cover how to get the most out of automations in your church track account. And then afterwards, we'll follow up with some tips and a Q and A. All right, you ready, Wes? I am ready. Let's do this. I have been ready for a while, so let's go ahead and jump in. First up is what is automations in the first place? Uh, well, before we ask, before we answer that though, I actually have a question for all of you, and that is, in your role at your ministry. Uh, what are some regular or repetitive tasks that consume a lot of your time? Wes is asking this in the chat right now. Go ahead and leave an answer in the chat. What are some regular or repetitive tasks that consume a lot of your time in your role at your ministry or your church? And if you're on Facebook um, watching this live or if you're watching this live on YouTube, uh, you won't be able to jump in this chat here. So I just want to kind of put that out there. Now, we see, I've, uh, since we've released this automations feature, I do I do one-on-one -on -one workshops over Zoom with a lot of our churches. And I've been able to show off the automations feature. And like the, the one thing that everyone asks about is like a new guest follow-up mm -hmm. and then uh, maybe some like birthday messages. But there's a lot of tasks that you're you're doing in your church management software and at your ministry that you're doing every day that are kind of tedious, like filing paperwork or sending out certain messages to large groups of people. So go ahead and let us know. 
Oh, yeah, bill Tr pay. Trisha's yes. bill pay. That's a big one. Absolutely. And that's actually something that, that there's, there's an element of that that you can automate it with ChurchTrack automations on the accounting screen. So if you have the Plus subscription with ChurchTrack, you get access to the accounting feature and you can actually automate the transactions. And we can even show you a little bit later how to do that. D Danita says sending a report. And that's a big one because uh, I've worked with a lot of ministry leaders yes. where they there's certain reports they need to get out mm -hmm. at the beginning of the month, whether it's a giving report, it's a certain type of accounting report. Mm -hmm. um, and this is something that's definitely going to help with that. So you're not having to constantly remember, oh, I got to send out this report to this person and my treasurer and all this. No, automations can do all that. Absolutely. So that's this is why we made the automations feature in Church Tracker. I can't say we, I can't, I can't take credit for this. Our developers are certified superheroes <laughs> for designing this. Uh, an automation, just to get the definition covered, an automation is a set of one or more actions that are run either in, on a schedule or in response to a trigger in a database. In other words, automation is simply if this happens, then that happens. I like that definition better because the first one, <laughs> I, my eyes started glazing over. Yeah. I'm like, say what to the what? I mean, I yeah. had to, I have it written down. I had to read it because <laughs> it's so boring. I didn't devote enough brain power to memorize it. <laughs> uh, so if you're working in your church management software or your database, doing things like uh, notating a person's profile or like following up with guests or updating some tags or uh, updating other information, lots of other things that you're probably doing on a daily or at least a weekly basis. Yeah. Automations in Church Track let you outsource this responsibility and this task to the software. So you get to offload it from your plate onto the software's plate and the software can handle anything you put on its plate. Yes. And you can take all of that um, off of your, uh, just out of your responsibility so you spend less time doing that tedious work and more time doing the ministry that you were called to do in the first place. So to get started, we're gonna show you how to create a few of these automations. And once you see how it's done, you'll be able to make any, any, any automations of your own. Because the process is simple and the process is, repeat, is, is uh, the same for whatever automation Every you're time. creating. So let's get started. I've got an account in Church Track pulled up. Right now I'm in the home dashboard screen. Uh, to get to the automations screen or the feature, just click settings and automations. It's the last feature on the, the list of the main menu. And then at the top, there's the automations tab. When you, if you're just getting started and you haven't touched automations yet in your church track account, you're gonna see the screen look just like this. It's gonna be blank. You're gonna have to create your own. But adding a new automation is very quick and very simple. We'll just click the add button. And then uh, this little slide out menu appears on the right. And we have several different options for how to create or what kind of automation we want to create. Uh, the first two, just right off the top, you'll see this build your own automation option. And you can create either a people automation or a uh, application automation. And I wanna talk about this real quick just so that you understand the difference. A people automation is an automation that has to do with the people screen. Uh, your, your, your members, your, your guests, everybody you have listed there. An application automation is an automation that has to do with everything else in your church track account. So like the giving screen, the accounting screen. Uh, I think even like, you can do stuff with the event. Well, not necessarily the event screen, but we'll probably add those later. Eventually, yeah. Yeah. That's, a, that's on the docket. But everything to do with everything else in the account is under application automation. But if you want to do like a, a birthday message or a new guest follow-up, that's a people automation. But we also have these pre-built templates that you can use. So if you're just getting started and you want to kind of dip your toes in before you go full out on creating your own custom automations, you can start here. And that's what we're going to do. So to get started with automations, let's do the birthday message. This is actually, this is a very popular request. I get asked this all the time. It's such a great one. So we're going to create a birthday message, meaning uh, we're going to set up whenever somebody's birthday comes up, the system will automatically text them a happy birthday message. So I've got that selected. Uh, I got to give this a name before we move on. So we'll say, we'll just call this birthday message. You can call it whatever you want. Click add automation. And I've already got this started. We've already created a, an action, which is that it will send an email to that member. We've already got the, uh, the time for it to run set up. It's good. This is a message that will be sent out at 9 a.m. every morning to whoever has a birthday that day. And it'll be applied to every name in this automatically generated smart list, birthday is today. So all of that is created. All I have to do is select this send an email option and I can customize the email that's sent out to them to say happy birthday. 
Now, what's cool is the little squiggly bracket um, that we actually already added, injected that in, which will inject that person's first name. So this will customize a uh, automated message. That way, the recipient gets a personalized message. Yeah, because well, I mean, we we live in a day, today's age where people expect that personalization now. Yeah. I mean, I get messages from like coffee companies telling me happy birthday. And so shouldn't us as a church be able to do the same thing? <laughs> yeah. Um, but we're going to talk more about like getting beyond just the simple thing here. I, so hold tight on that. Absolutely. Now I can add other actions. I can say I want to also, let's say, uh, send a text message as well. So they get hit both ways. That way, who, no matter what, if there's someone who regularly checks email or never checks email, they're going to get, get that the message. message that they want. So I'll select that option, select and configure. And this is where I can type up the message, just like in that email. And you can customize the message to say whatever you want. But that's how I would add that action to this, this automation. That's how to get started with automations. It was very simple. We just selected that pre-built template. It already had all of the features of that template set up. And I can add any other customizations to it from here. Uh, what's another good automation to show them? Um, I tell you what, let's do, th this is a really basic one and it's actually a pre-built template as well. Okay. But um, whenever a new name is added to the database, I want a particular church track user to be notified okay. about this. Okay. So like if you have like an outreach or like a, a per someone who's over the, the new guest, the onboarding, the outreach of the church, yeah. you can notify that person. Yeah. Okay. So we'll click the add button. And over there, yeah, you're right. So there is a pre-built template. Notify when a new name is added. And then we'll say new name added. We'll call this automation new name added. Again, you can name your automations whatever you want. I'm just keeping it very generic as an example. So my new name added automation, we've already got two actions added to this automation. The first is we're actually gonna send an email to a church track user to Matt at churchtrack.com happens to be me. And we're going to create a task for that user. And that task will appear on that person's projects and tasks tab on the home and dashboard screen. Um, so for the email, let's see what it says. All right, a new name was added to your church track database, and it injects all that person's info, their name, their phone, address, and email. And then it creates a task for, that, for this user as well follow up with that person's name and all their contact information. So for anybody at your church, if they're a user in the church track account, you can assign this as a task to that person to follow up with that new guest. But you know what? Let's take this to the next step. I think we should take it to the next level. Let's take it to the next level. We're going to make this automation do even more for us than what it already does. So instead of just notifying this user and creating a task for them to follow up with the person in the middle of the week, Let's also follow up with that guest. Let's send them a follow-up text. So I'll click add a new action. I'll say send a text slash SMS message, select and configure. And I can say, hey, first name. I love that. How yeah, I know. <laughs> just, I just clicked on that first. I'll, I'll even zoom in just to make sure everybody watching this can see. We have this little toolbar right below the message window. And you can like inject that person's custom information. So if I were to select address, that person's address will be added into that text message. Not that we need that, but I just wanted to demonstrate that. Yeah, in this situation, that'd be kind of weird if I, like, as a new guest, or <laughs> just yeah. got sent my, my personal <laughs> <Yeah>. information. <laughs> but you can, you can inject their first name, that, and you can say it, you can leave it this way. That way, every new guest has their name added to the text, so it's personalized. So, hey, first name, thank you for joining us in worship. On Sunday, uh, we would love to see you next week or so something like that. Of course, you can think of something better to say than that, but I'm just showing you how you can customize these messages. And then I'll click Save Action and boom, there it is. So we're actually packing in these actions into this automation so that this automation does even more than what it was originally set up to do. And you can add as many actions as you want, which yes. I've seen some churches, they'll take this to a crazy level in a good way yes. where they'll have all these different things happening all at once yeah. when someone's added to their church track database or whatever else it may be. Yeah. We're kind of jumping the gun, but that's really how you like get the most out of church track automations is pack them in with actions. Now that we've set up this new name added and even turned it into a new guest follow-up, 
let's go even further, or let's 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 show them another automation. What would be another automation we could show them? Well, I think a really really good one is okay. I want my treasurer to automatically get emailed last month's giving report on the first Monday of the month. Okay. You okay. got that? I do. So treasurer <laughs> giving report month first Monday of the month. Yes. All right. And that's actually that's just a that's that's the the process of creating an automation is knowing ahead of time everything that you want to accomplish so you can kind of work your way backwards. Yeah. So I'll click the add button. And you know what? We have this pre-built template to email a church track report, and I recommend for ease that you use that. But we're gonna we're gonna go deeper, and I'm gonna show the, uh, the process of like creating from start to finish from start yeah. to finish uh, uh, a, an automation from scratch. So a giving report doesn't have anything to do with the people screen; it's with the giving screen. So this is an application automation, and we'll say monthly giving report, and then add automation. So now this screen is blank. Rather than already having actions and the auto, the options preloaded, I have to tell the system everything that I want this automation to do. And one thing I just want to reinforce, because this really helped me, is your actions, that's like what is going to happen. Yes. And then the options, that's like well, who, when. who, yeah, when and who and stuff. So, yes. Yeah. And we'll, you'll see that in action. I should have think, thought of a better word than action, but you'll see that at play here uh, in just a second. Unintended. Yes. <laughs> So we'll say add a new action, and we want to email, let's say, uh, was a giving, there we go. Email a giving screen report, it's right there in the middle. Select and configure. So choose a report. Let's say we want a giving history report. And we'll say select a user as a recipient, and we'll just pretend like uh, this Ronald, he's, he's the treasurer at this church. We'll choose a date range. So we'll say we want last month. So last month is what we want the report for. So we want a giving history report sent to Ronald for the, the giving of last month. That's so cool. It's all right there. Yeah, right you, just have to, you just have to choose the options you want. Save action. Now I have to say when I want this to run. And right now it's currently disabled or paused. So this isn't going to actually be functional until we change this. Now... There are a couple ways we can make this work, um, whether we want this on a schedule or, and this isn't an option here, I'll show you this in a little bit, but you can also create a trigger uh, automation where uh, instead of a, a certain time that the automation is run, it's uh, run in response to something that happens in the software. But you said you wanted this once a month. Yeah, once a month. Every month or on a day of the month. So yeah. we'll say on a day of the month. On the first, oh, you know what? This is a specific date. So how about every month? We'll select the every month option, and you wanted it on the first Monday. Yeah, first Monday. Um, we'll just keep it right there at 9 a.m., but we could select a different time if we wanted to. Perfect. Save changes. There we go. And that's it. I mean, like, that's there, it. There's literally nothing else to do. Unless we wanted other reports to send, like, you know, maybe uh, accounting reports, not just a giving report. We could stack multiple reports in this automation. Oh, okay. But it, if, if this is all you needed, you just wanted a giving history report, you could, we're done. This is it. And then what's so cool is just because we can have multiple actions, you could add another action and say, I yes. want this other person to receive this report as well. Yeah, absolutely. So you could, you could say, all right, the treasurer needs this, but also the pastor needs this. So you can go through the same exact process, but instead of selecting Ronald, you'll select whoever the pastor is as the user of this account. So you can have the same report sent to multiple users in church track just by adding that person into an action. Now, just because I like to see kind of everything that's going on here, can we see the accounting reports available as well? Sure, yeah, let's do that. So add, well, you know what? We'll just pack it into this, this, this automation. Okay. Add a new action. We're gonna say we're gonna email an accounting screen report. Select and configure, choose a report. Uh, we could do with a balance sheet so we can know the, the overall um, where everything stands in all of our funds and categories. We could see the income statement, or which is like a profits and loss statement, or we could see the budget versus actual. So this is not just for your regular accounting reports, it's also for the budget screen as well. That's awesome. So we'll say we'll do the income statement, and we'll also have this sent to the treasurer, and we'll choose the date range again for last month, but we could do, and we could do this for like last week or this particular upcoming month, it doesn't matter, whatever we need. Okay. 
And so now both of those reports, and you can keep stacking this. And this is, I think, the part when a lot of church leaders, they see this, the light bulb goes on and they realize, all right, this time that I'm spending, maybe I'm spending 20 to 30 minutes every single Monday, the first Monday of the month, sending all these different reports Mm -hmm. to different people and different ministry leaders. I can literally set this up, spend the same amount to set this up that I would have done every time I do this. Yeah. And now this just does this automatically. Yeah. Yeah. So the amount of time it took to create that report and attach it to an email and send it off to one of your other leaders you can take that time, like Wes was saying, to create this automation and then never have to spend that time ever again. The system will take care of it for you. wild. So with a little bit of effort on the front end, you can save yourself a lot of time in the long run. That's what these automations are for, and that's why we created them for you. So we've done a birthday message, a new name added, and a new guest follow-up. We've also done monthly giving report with also the income statement from the accounting screen. So we've really packed it in. Uh, Now that we've shown you how to get started, we've kind of laid out the process of creating these automations. Honestly, every automation we could show you would follow that exact same process of clicking add, naming it, selecting what kind of automation you want, and then telling it the actions and the options. Now, let's get into how to get the most out of automations. So step one for getting the most out of automations Our recommendation is to pack each and every single automation in with as many actions as you can possibly think. Uh, And the reason why I say that is because I don't want uh, I don't want you to think you have to create a new automation for every little thing you want the software to do. That's a really good thing to mention because I had I've seen some churches they'll have just this long list long, of automations yes. when really they could have that one automation replace like the ten they just created. Yeah. Because you can add so many actions to yes. them. And I was just replying back to someone, um, Lee Mac. You know, can you send the same report to multiple people simultaneously? Yes, you can, and that's kind of how you do it, by just adding multiple mm-hmm. actions to that single automation. And whenever you're creating that automation, I mean, I've seen churches do like just their, they, they'll name it something generic, like their monthly report, but then that monthly report, all the actions are a bunch of different reports going to a bunch of different people. Yes. And so it's literally just one automation that For has all their maybe six or seven different reports going to 10 different people all in one automation. So it's yes. pretty wild. And that that just keeps your automation screen kind of clean. You don't have to scroll through and see which automation is doing what and which ones are disabled and when this one goes out. You just know. You can see it pretty simply all the automations on one screen. You'll know exactly what's happening at any given time. It's just easier to keep track of. So, and also the the other side of the coin, the other reason why we recommend packing them in with automations is because that way you get them, like you, you make these automations do more for you. Uh, so you offload more work onto the software by thinking through more and more like what actions you want to accomplish with these automations. So the more actions you add, the less you ha- work you have to do, <laughs> yes. basically. Yes. Um, add other leaders. This is like a little, this is almost like a pro tip, but add other users to your church track account, other leaders and volunteers so that you can assign stuff to them. Yeah. And you can, you can assign tasks to them. You can send them reports. You can send them follow-ups. That way they can all be a part of the benefit of the automations feature. So add more and more users to your church track account. Literally, if you think through, if you think through, if you're if you're using these features, and this is this applies to everything in Church Track, but if you're using the automation feature and you just like find yourself wishing that you could send this to so and so at your church, that's kind of an indication you need to add that person as a user anyway. So go ahead and add as many people as you have at your on your team and your leadership as users in Church Track. We don't charge per user. It's and, not going to cost you anything. And it's you, on the same screen. I mean, literally, all you have to do is go from the automations tab to the user accounts tab. And then you can start creating additional users for your church yeah. and set all the different permissions. So that way, if it's maybe your worship leader, you can say that this person has access to everything but the financials, whatever it may be. Right. Um, so, yeah, that's a really great tip. Uh, and then the next recommendation for getting the most out of automations is to check out our automations recipes. Uh, I have a link to the article in the video description below. But also, I'll show you real quick. If you click on the help button, I'll click on automations. Let's see. Yeah. All right. So it's even in the help button window. You don't even have to go to the user guide. If you click that help button in the drop down window, the automation recipes article is linked here. We have 
several automations and we even lay out how to create them in this article. Each recipe has its own video. I think, Wes, did you record all of these or did? I, I think you recorded oh, some I did. too. <laughs> I don't know why I'm asking you. I, I recorded a couple of them. Uh, so Wes and I recorded these automations. We're getting recommendations from some churches that are basically heavy users of the automation screen. So we're getting some inspiration from them as well for things that we, I mean, even I would never even thought of to, to use yeah. automations for. So if you create a really cool automation that's really beneficial to you, you can submit that to us and we'll add it in and we'll credit your church and everything. So yeah. use this as a, a really great starting point for creating automations that benefit your ministry. Um, so we have that resource for you. Also, like another little plug for our Facebook group. Uh, you can ask there for automation. I've seen a few times people yeah. have jumped into the Facebook group and asked for some recommendations or some ideas for automations. And every time somebody asks that question, uh, churches like kind of like showing off what they've done. Yeah. And like what they've created for themselves. They enjoy that. So you can get some really cool recommendations and some really neat inspiration for automations by joining our Facebook group asking the group there for what they've used in automations, and they'll, they'll show it off to you. It's a little show and tell time. All right, so that's how to get the most out of automations. Now let's run through a few just basic tips just to kind of get you started and point you in the right direction. Um, when it comes to automations um, for setting them up, the best way to get the most out of these automations is to start out knowing the end in mind, like having the end in mind as you create these automations. In other words, um, it's not just thinking through like your daily tasks, but everything you want to accomplish and everything you want to happen in response to one of those tasks. So as you create an automation, and one of the reasons why I use, I, I put this in as a tip is because there's, there's this like, advanced feature in automations called task automations. We're not going to get real deep into that because that can get really technical, but you can create an automation and set a trigger, set the set the set set it to run in response to a trigger of a task being completed in church track. So basically you can create a uh, automation that generates a task. I think we did that under the new name added. So like in this case, uh, this, this automation creates a task for uh, somebody named user to follow up with this uh, person, uh, this new guest that was added to the, the people screen. I could create another automation on the screen that is triggered whenever this person completes that task and checks it off on the projects and tasks tab. So you can even create multiple automations that are linked together. That's why as a, the, my number one tip is to think with the end in mind, because you can even create multiple automations that are strung together. And if you have processes at your church, like let's say uh, somebody shows up, uh, a, a leader follows up with them, they're a second time returning guest, you get them plugged into like the new members class, they join a small group. Let's, you can think through like what you want your new people to do and the trajectory you want to take them through your church. Yeah. And you can create an automation for each one of those steps and link them all together by tasks. And it, we've got a whole video that actually walks through that. I think you made that video. Yes, I did. <laughs> um, and that's gonna be one I'd recommend watching because that is probably the most advanced feature in all of church track, if I'm being honest. Um, and it's really not hard. It's just you you want to know like how to get there. And that video does a good job of explaining it. Um, and I'll, I'll even post it in the chat here in just a second. So that's tip number one for uh, using automations. Tip number two is consult with your team on what automations would benefit them. Uh, if you if they're all using church track, um, and they all have access to the settings and automation screen, they can create their own automations. But if you want this managed and kind of, you know, not, not have too many cooks in the kitchen, just consult with your team, have them go through the church track account, see all the features here, all the tools they're using on the screens that you've given them access to. And whatever like regular tasks they're doing in that screen, chances are it can probably be automated. And if it can't, reach out to our support team with a ticket, request that as a feature, and we can uh, add that into the rotation for our developers to add that as a, a feature yeah. for your, your account. Um, step, uh, tap, tip number three is, we uh, I had already written it down and I've already talked about it, but task automations. Uh, again, think through all the tasks that you want to create in response to a uh, automation, and then think through how you can create new automations that act or are run in response to that task being created. I'll actually show you real quick just 
we can create a, another automation and link it to this task just to show you how to set this up. But we have this task for when a new name is added. Let's say we want uh, a membership class. Let's say we have a membership class. And this is going to be a people automation. So we'll click Add Automation. And for a new action, let's say we want to send an email. Click Select and Configure, Email Subject. Uh, thanks for joining the new member class. And then for this, I can say, hey, first name. And what I'm thinking through, and I'm kind of jumping through over some steps here. Uh, let me explain what I'm doing. Let's say like in response to that new name added process, the outreach director reaches out to that new guest and they agree to like join the new member class. Uh, we can have this, this process or this automation kicked off for uh, that guest once they've agreed to do the membership class to receive some like information ahead of that class, like a packet mm -hmm. that the church has created. So I can create a link, I can add a link here into this message that directs them to like the PDF that they can download ahead of time for that new member class. So you can create automations that are run in response to other automations being kicked off. So let's say we'll save action. I've already created a message. I've added the link from the church. When I want this to run, I want this to be triggered. This is something I wanted to show you earlier. Before we selected those accounting and giving reports to run on a schedule, but now this, this automation is gonna run in a tr on a trigger. So a trigger is, no, is like an action that has taken place somewhere else in the software. So we're going to have this automation run in response to something else happening in the software. That's what the, if this happens, then that happens definition we talked about earlier. Yeah. So we'll say when a tag is, or when a linked task is completed, and we'll say the new name added follow-up name task that we created, or that was automatically generated by that new name added automation, save changes. So that's it. In other words, what happens is whenever this new name added trigger or this new name added automation is run and it creates that task on the home and dashboard screen. So let's pretend like this attend prayer service task is that follow up task that we showed you earlier. As the user of this account that was assigned that task from that automation, when I check it off like that, it's a little anticlimactic, but when I check it off, that other automation will run. In other words, that member will receive that email that we just generated or we just customized with that information about the new member class. So that's how task automations work. You can link multiple automations together in a chain through these tasks that are created by the prior automation. And then last but not least, uh, make targeted automations with your smart lists. In other words, uh, if you want like um, uh, a message sent out to, let's say, I'm trying to think of a good example for like... Maybe like all the leaders at your church. Yeah, you can create a smart list on the people and family screen. And then go to the smart list and create a group of like your children's ministry volunteers. And you can create automations that occur in response to a trigger in your account or on a schedule. And then just select this smart list, children's ministry volunteers, for that automation to run. That way, when you're creating these automations, you're not sending messages out to your entire church. You could send an email or a text to just a particular group at your church. So you can even have targeted automations for specific yeah. people, not just your entire church. It's, it, there is so much going on here. I think probably the biggest thing that I, I see churches when they look at automations for the first time is kind of that similar thing when they, people look at church track for the first time is they're like, where do I begin? <laughs> yes. Um, because it, it can do so much. I mean, there, there are so many combinations of automations you can create and how, who they can affect and when they can affect them. Um, so I always recommend to get that inspiration, check out the automation recipes because mm -hmm. it's going to really show you some cool things. And also start from the very get-go, use some of those templates that we've already got built in. Yes. Uh, number one, because they literally make the automation basically instantly. I mean, you can you could create like four automations for your church in like five minutes. Under that. Uh, yeah, it's that, that fast. Um, and then you can go through and then start editing those automations and just play around with it uh, because there's you'll see the more that you spend kind of clicking around, seeing all the different options. So like, for example, Matt, let's just click an automation. Um, yeah, when a new name is added and go to add a new action real fast. 
just because I want people to see, like, I can email a certain church track user. I can send out an, an email across the board. I can add a note, create a task, update a church track field, update a user defined field, add a tag, remove a tag, send an SMS to a church track user, send a text message. I mean, there's so many options. And the thing that I really, really, really love about automations when it comes to how it can revolutionize your ministry, sometimes people, they look at automations and they think, well, this is just something that's taking the human element out of my church. Um, no, this is actually something that pairs nicely with the human element and actually having a deeper connection with people. Yes. And what I mean by that, go to that birthday message because this is something. So we have this option by default where you can have the system send an email to someone or maybe you can have it send a text message saying happy birthday so and so. But I want to take this to the next level because I think it's so much more important that Yes, people, we probably need to send an email just wishing him happy birthday, blah, blah, blah. But I want a pastor to get notified that it's so-and-so's birthday ah, and letting the pastor yeah. know, reach out to this person yes. personally. So I want to take this to the next level and actually make a human interaction with automations. And so that's what's so neat is we can actually use this tool that automates so many things, but to be a catalyst for human interaction as well send birthday message yes so to and then well actually it'll be in the i mean there's so many ways you can do this and then you can insert the person's name and phone number and everything you can have the system text message the pastor with the other person's information saying it's their birthday send them a text at this number whatever you want to do um that's that's the beauty of automations is yes it's going to save you a lot of time it's going to keep you from having to do the mundane tasks over and over again, but it's also going to give you another level of that human interaction. And it's and it's not just that uh, the other element of that, like the other side of it, is that it's not just that you can create these tasks to send reminders for the person to reach out to that that uh, member, but also like you're you're outsourcing a lot of your time and energy to the software, which frees you up to do more ministry. So you actually are increasing the human element by taking some of the non-human stuff out of your mm-hmm. out of off of your plate and giving you more time to have and create those connections anyway. Yeah. Um, now let's do this. I think we, we've covered a lot. Yes. Um, and it's going to take a while, I think, for some people to have all this settle in, just because there's so many things yes. that they can do with this. Yes. Um, I just want to open the floor for questions and really just use this as a time. Ask us anything and everything automations wise. Can it do this? Can it do that? Can you sh- tell me how to create an automation that would do this? Yes. And let's create some automations in real yeah, time. So you all suggest to us an automation that you would like us to create. I think somebody even, um, somebody actually asked a question earlier. Let me see if I can pull that up. Uh, can you autom- Can you automate adding events? And you recommend they yeah, call yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, so you, Melissa, you ask, can I make an automation for a custom report to be emailed? And I'm assuming you're talking about like on the people screen. And as of right now, that's, um, I'm trying to think if there's an application automation that does people reports in the first it, place. Unless our developers snuck one in on us, which they do sometimes. They'll add in Easter eggs for us to find here. Um, but I don't think that's an option yet. I say yet just because we're always adding things. So let's see the reports we can do. Create an account, create a people screen report. There so we see. go. So there's there's custom report options. Oh, see, that's what I thought so. Okay. I didn't want to say yes right away, <laughs> but the answer is yes. So uh, Melissa, let's start from the beginning so that I can show you what I just did because I kind of blazed through it. Yeah, we're going to do this. So we're, I'm going to click the add button. I actually learned something new today, Matt. <laughs> I didn't realize custom reports is also one that either they added that or that's one I just didn't see when we came out with this. So to title this, I'm just going to call this report name. Uh, so Melissa, whatever report, whatever custom report you're wanting to generate, just put that report name in here. And then I'm going to say I want an application automation. Even though this is a report that's on the people screen, uh, all reports are tucked away into the application automation screen. So we're going to select that. And then I'm, I'll select add a new action. And I have a lot of different reports that I can, or, or create a, an accounting transaction or select different reports. The, section op, the second option is to email a people screen report. Then I'll choose a report. There's a couple of options preloaded, but I can select a custom report. So whatever custom reports you've created on your account, you can select that in this drop-down menu, choose a custom report. I can select whatever user or recipient I want. 
and then choose a smart list or tag for like what I want to run that report on or who like who in the in the church that report yeah. will, will run on. So that's how you do that custom people report. And you can run that automatically in church track. That, that's um that would be a good one for us to do for an automation recipe, I think. Yeah, Doing absolutely. A report. Um, okay. Um, now, Danita's got a, a really good one, and we're going to have to walk through this a little bit because this one does require a couple elements to make it happen. Um, so Danita wants to create one with a user-defined field for wedding anniversary, kind of mimicking the birthday one that we already have built in, Right. Um, in which I guess, Danita, you want the system to maybe send an email or a text message to a person on their anniversary date saying, hey, happy anniversary, something of that nature, I would assume. Um, so Matt. I actually tried creating this the other day because this was something that was requested by a church that I was in a Zoom workshop with. Um, I don't think it's possible, but let's give it a shot. We're gonna figure it out in real time if yeah. we can. So people and families will go to SmartList. Uh, for anniversaries, I think I, this is the one I tried to create. So I've got the smart list for anniversaries, or we'll say, and so we just need to, to add criteria. Wedding anniversary is today here. That's actually what I was trying to create because birthday is today is here, and that criteria is for birthday is today, uh, for like the for the, uh, for the criteria. Let's say for a user defined field, we have that wedding anniversary option here, but it's only the before or after or equals. So not like is today. The is is mm. not an option. So the only thing that I can think of is maybe there's a way to create a user-defined field that allows us to, to select is instead of just equals before and after. So that may be something that you have to suggest to the developers. Uh, go, I'll even show you all how to select a uh, request a feature. Uh, I'll click that orange help button in the top right-hand corner and then click ask us a question. Wait, go back, Matt. Oh, yeah. Go back. What? I just saw something. Wedding anniversary. Mm -hmm. hey, so yeah, click the X out of there. Equals. Yes, but that's a, a specific date. So whatever uh, wedding anniversary, I would have to create. A, I would have to create a smart list for every. Sorry, I day thought of the I year. saw something. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. See, we because if I go to birthday is today, like I'll just show you how to create this criteria. We'll say birthday, and they this there's a different option for is instead of equals or before or after, so. I don't think it's an option for like creating a user-defined field that gives you the ability to select is instead of equals or after or or before. Um, so that's something that I, we will talk to the developers because this yeah. is a highly requested feature, at least directly to me by yeah. word of mouth. And I've heard this from many church leaders too. So, so go ahead and uh, create a support ticket and request that feature. The more churches that request the same thing, the more likely <laughs> it is that the developers will realize, all right, this is actually something we need to add to the software. Yeah. Church track, I mean, pretty much every feature in church track comes from the feedback of you all. So yes. we appreciate your feedback. Uh, Melissa has... Um, can, can I add that custom report automation to be triggered when a new person is added to their list for follow-up? So this is a situation, Melissa, in which you would want to utilize that when a person is tagged. So go back to the automations, Matt. Mm -hmm. I should say please and thank you. All right, so <laughs> back to the automations. And then go to that report name. And then in this situation, you would, when is this automation going to run? Select that. You would... Um, Hmm, I'm trying to think here if there's a way. Yeah, I don't think under application automations, I don't think that you can set up a trigger. I think it's only on a schedule. Yeah, it would be on a schedule, and I'm trying to think if there's a way to get around to it. Um, create a support ticket on that, and that way we can dig a little deeper. Uh, what, what's so wild about this automations feature is just because of the sheer amount of things of it. Yeah, yeah, you can do with this. We're still learning new things each and every day of just cool ways churches are utilizing this tool to be able to automate different things and, and take it to the next level. Um, all right, cool. Uh, any other uh, people want to have anything to add here in terms of like automations you want us to try to create in real time or if it can and cannot do something? Um, what's wild, Matt, too, is I feel like in some situations I've seen personally, and you might have experienced this as well, there's like multiple ways to do what you want to do with an automation. Yes. And it just comes down to, are you leveraging user-defined fields more in your database than you are tags? Or are you leveraging tasks more? Mm -hmm. um, and so there's just many different ways that you can do kind of the same automation. Yep. 
And that's it's because it's multifaceted. Our, our developers made this as expansive as possible. Though, as you're making these suggestions, there are still there's still room for more. So as you're using this automations feature, if you run into a situation where there's like a task that can be accomplished in church track, but it's not an option in automations, click that help button, send us a new feature request and let us know that you want the automations to do X, Y, Z for you. And we'll think about adding that into the rotation for the developers. All right. So Shirley's got one. This is, I actually have used this one many times in the past. What about sending a form? So you're wanting to send a form to someone. Um, so you could send a form in a few different ways. You could create an automation in which you link to a form on Church Connect. Maybe you send that out via email mm -hmm. to people automatically. That's what I'm thinking too. Or text message. That yeah, would be a so good one. I would, for sending forms to people, I would go to Church Connect. I would go to the Church Connect feature uh, and then add a card and I would add a form card. So I'd go ahead and build the form in Church Connect and then whenever you've created a card, if I go to the connect page address, in this case, we already have this connect with potential card here. This is a form card. So we'll pretend like we just created this form. Uh, I'll take this URL here at the top. Every card you create in Church Connect has a unique URL. So I can grab this URL. I can go into settings and automations. And then I can either create an automation here or I'll just select an automation that's already that already exists or like, you know, that new name added or, or that membership class I mentioned, you know, I could send an email and add a link to like a PDF. If I wanted, let's say my uh, guests that are going to take a members class to fill out a form ahead of time, I can drop that link in here to this email. So that's what Wes was talking about. You can create that form in Church Connect, grab the URL and then drop it into an email or a text that you're sending out to the person at your church or the leader or the user of Church Track, you name it. Yeah. Um, there's another one. So this one actually has the wheels in my mind turning. This is from Lisa. Calendar of events with weekly report. Um, so we, we can send out the, the weekly report for that. Um, but I'm aware of the sign-up emails. Those only show individual people as they sign up. So yeah, ca calendar events weekly report is going to be a great one just to show calendar events. Now there's another thing you could do, and I'm just kind of think through this, Matt. Could you, in essence, maybe cr create a smart list that has people recently added to your database, and then you could then have that smart list emailed to different church track users, perhaps? That would be one way to have an automation in which once a month or once a week or something, you get a report sent of everybody who's been added to your database within that time frame. That's a possibility. That's a good idea, but I don't know how to do that. That, that's all right. So just kind of thinking out loud here, go to our smart list, Matt. Yes. This, this is fun. I, I love yeah. exploring how to like solve things with this. Um, so create, add a new smart list and we'll just call this new people, whatever. And now add criteria. And so this one would be, I believe added to the database, or maybe we already have one that's recent. I can't remember. Date added. There we go. So then you could create a smart list in which people are added um, before or after a certain date or something like that. And then you could have this tied into it. So there, there's a lot of different ways that you can really... Yes. I, th I think that's the crazy thing is when you look at just how malleable these smart lists are and all the wild things that you can do with the customization of a smart list, and then you pair that with all the things that you can do with automations, um, this, is, mm -hmm. this makes Baskin Robbins look like they have hardly any flavors at all. There right? we go. So instead of selecting a date, say date added was last, last month. month. Oh man, there that's perfect. So you can have this run monthly. You could have this report run every month and use this smart list for who to run that report on. There you go. So that's how you would do that in the automations. Now, Trisha is asking about sending a weekly calendar of events, Matt. So is that a um, report that we have built into the automation side? Uh, calendar reports? I don't think event reports are an option under automations. So if I were to go click add, application automations, and we'll just say example, just give it something generic. I don't think, oh, there's an events and attendance report. There you go. Okay, so, so email, that. event, and attendant re attends, attendance report. I'm actually kind of curious if, okay, so it looks like there's um, calendar list report, detail. All right, so calendar list report may be the report you're searching for. Choose a date range. 
last month or this month. Okay. So there you so, go. So check out that one, generate that one, see if that one works well for you. Um, what that? Go back to the reports. Choose a report, Matt. Um, go back. Or I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Create an action. Uh, we're flying around so fast here. And then email an event attendance report. I just wanted to point out this one because this is probably one of my favorite attendance reports. That uh, absentee report. Yes. This is so incredibly handy. Yeah. Um, I've actually seen a lot of churches, what they've done in order to really help their Sunday school teachers and their small group leaders just identify the people that are maybe getting disconnected and haven't been there in a while. They will automate this report. And so that way, once a month, the small group leader is getting a report report of everybody who hasn't attended their small group at all in the past month. Mm -hmm. um, and this is just great data to give our people because yes. sometimes we, we just get deep into things in our ministry and we don't realize that, hey, Jamie hasn't actually been here in a month. Didn't really realize that just because we were busy doing all the other things. And so having a report that says, hey, this person hasn't been here and this report goes out to all of our small group leaders automatically on that whenever time you select in the month, uh, that's a pretty great tool. Yeah, actually, I've used that. I've not used it in the automations, but the absentee report, like, my pastor loves it. Yeah. Because you know exactly who hasn't. Because as a pastor, like, he, it's a, we're, we're a small church, and we know everybody. But as a pastor, sometimes, it, like, you're so busy doing everything that noticing that one person that hasn't shown up in the past, like, three or four weeks in a row, it can be hard. You'll, you'll wonder, well, yeah. actually, I don't know. Haven't I seen them recently? No, actually, you haven't. You've seen everybody else, and it's just they've got lost in the shuffle, but no more. Yes. And, well, and that comes back to why we do what we do here at Church Yes. Because we want to help equip your church to build the body of Christ. And part of building the body of Christ is being able to see that, hey, someone hasn't been here in a while. Let's reach out to them and let's see how we can minister to this person exactly. to keep them connected to the body. And so that's just so neat that we can utilize technology to be able to do this on any kind of scale, whether you're on a smaller scale and maybe you have a church of 50 people or you're on a larger scale and you've got a church of 5,000 people. This is a tool that is so easy to use, mm -hmm. but so incredibly powerful that you can use it in any use case scenario. Uh, right. Well, I don't see any other questions. Uh, Danita was saying that she's uh, started using that for hospitality follow-up. So that's awesome. All right. Well, I don't see any questions, so we'll go ahead and close it here. Uh, just as a very quick reminder, uh, don't forget to join our Facebook group. I can even drop a link into the chat here again, just to make sure everybody has it. It's a wonderful community that we would love every single one of you to be a part of. Uh, it's got ministers from all around the world. If you ever have any questions about Church Track or even non-Church Track related stuff. Just talk about ministry. Ask there. Uh, people there love ministry and love Church Track so much. The, and always, there's always somebody that knows the answer to whatever question is being asked. It's amazing. Uh, and we also have a great YouTube channel. This video will be on the YouTube channel here in the coming days. So if you want to watch it again, yeah. or if you felt like you, you missed something and you want to go back and cover it, uh, this will be up soon. So go ahead and subscribe to stay up to date on all future content and all future videos that we do, including more feature-focused webinars like this one. Yes. Um, this won't be the last one we do this year, I promise. No, no. Uh, so definitely subscribe and join there. And then also reach out to the support team anytime you ever have any questions. Uh, we'll, we'll get you taken care of. We'll, we'll end it with this. Danita says, I call this the kitchen aid of church software. <laughs> yes. So Danita, I, I respectfully disagree because kitchen aids are really expensive and we do not have our software for that really expensive price. In yes. fact, we are the most affordable church software in the world. Um, that is not by accident. That's intentional because we want to be a blessing to your ministry. Uh, but no, I, I love it. I really, Danita, we appreciate you so much. Um, and by the way, Danita hangs out in the Facebook group. Yes. And if you ever want to get some, some insight on different things, Danita, I would say, is probably one of our most seasoned veterans when it comes to being able to use the software. So yes. there you go. All right. Well, thank you, Matt. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. I hope you have a blessed day.